Avengers. Okay, the eight member of the Avenger team. Okay, well, good morning. Shout out to all the moms that are here this morning. Okay, you may be here. You're a mother of three, four, five, seven, or twelve. Okay, if that's you, raise your hand. Okay, you may be here, and uh, you're a mother for the first year. I know uh, there's somebody, Marion. Where are you? There, there they are. Okay, congratulations. And you may be here. You're praying to be a mom, right? You're seeing, you, you just, your dream in life since you were small is just to be a mom, okay? And now you're almost um, in the completion or fulfillment of that dream, okay? So some of us, you, are, are moms, and you don't have kids, but you have that mothering spirit. So this morning, this is a tribute for all of you, okay? You may not have kids. I know of somebody who lives in Abilene, you know, uh, she doesn't have kids but she has a mothering spirit. Whenever she uh, has uh, young uh, people with her, she, she mothers and nurtures them, okay? You don't have to be a, a birth mom to be a mom. But you know, motherhood, I believe, is a God-given calling. And if you are in that position of motherhood, physically, or maybe, you know, you're mothering somebody, you are in the best place to shape this nation more than the president of this nation. Amen? The president of this nation, she has what, how many, four years? To, 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 to shape and direct the guidance of the, 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 the direction of this nation. But you as mom, you have your lifetime to raise up your children, to speak hope, to speak life and direction, to speak righteousness and grace, to, to speak identity and strength to them. So never underestimate your position as a mom. You may be making, you know, um, $10,000 a month or a year. Or you may be making $100,000. It doesn't matter what you make. What matters is the influence that you leave on your child. Amen? This morning, I'd like to share to you about uh, the, the influence of godly mothers. Okay? Lessons from godly mothers. In the Bible, it's 1202 right now. We're in a good time. Because right now, all the restaurants are full with families uh, uh, eating and celebrating with their moms. So by the time we're done at 2 o'clock, <laughs> you have space. You don't have to line up at Luby's. The, every table's open. Okay? All the waiters are happy because they have been tipped. <laughs> all right. So w this morning, whatever you hear this morning, you know, this is for moms that are here. Yeah. Grab it. Okay? This is also for dads. You are here. Okay? Anything that we can do to honor moms, anything that we can do to, to love them and show them and bless them, we will do. This is also for the teenager, for the preteen, for the youngster who's here, you know, because this is the day of, you know, God honors mothers, and He honors them, He encourages them, He exhorts them, yes, but He also uses the husband to do that. Amen. He also uses children, mom's children, to do that. So before we go on, I think this is going to be a, a two-part, but this is, this, this is the first part, so we're going to go on. Okay? Lessons from godly mothers. I believe that um, one, uh, motherhood is one of the noblest things one can ever fulfill. Okay? Some of us are mothers for the first time. There's, there are handbooks about raising your child. There are handbooks about raising your husband. I mean, uh, um, there are handbooks about raising a family, ha raising your teenagers, okay? But there's no other best source to learn other than uh, the godly principles that God has placed in His Word, okay? So we will learn from godly mothers. We have, I think I have 50 godly mothers lined up in my PowerPoint right now. So by the time that it's 2 o'clock, we're all set. Okay? Lessons from godly mothers. Eve. We're familiar with Eve. She is the, the first mother. Okay? With Eve, in the book of Genesis, this is her story. Um, she was alone in the garden. Okay? And then the serpent approached her. And, and we believe, and a lot of Bible scholars believe, that she was alone when the serpent approached her. And uh, she was given seeds of doubt. And the serpent said, did God really say, 
do not eat of this fruit. Okay? And then she, she gave in to that. She started doubting, and then uh, she, she got the fruit, she ate it, and then she gave it to the, the guy, the man. Okay? So here in, 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 in the life of this mother, what can we learn? In, in the life of Eve, as a mother, we have to know, you have to know, that the enemy is out there to destroy your family. Okay? Be aware of the enemy's schemes and plans. He is out there to destroy the family. He is out there the future of your children. Okay? So we can learn from, from this mom, Eve, to be discerning. Be discerning is different from being suspicious. Okay? I know that uh, Pastor Kelly shared something about, you know, she was cleaning her uh, uh, room, uh, one of her child's room last week, and then she had that inclination or that impression to ask how was her school or how was the, the assignment. Did you, did, you, did, you get, did you get that story? If you didn't get that story, there it goes. Okay? So she had that discerning to ask. Okay? And then she asked. And, and sometimes, you know, we have to distinguish be, between being discerning and being suspicious. Okay? Sometimes you, you ask your husband, where'd you go? Where'd you go? How come you just... I'm just, I'm just, this, this is God telling me to ask you, why are you late? Are you discerning or are you being suspicious? You know? In a fun way, you know, our, our discernment is a gift from God. I always believe with what I think they call motherly instinct. A mother always knows, may, may, he, may she be a Christian or not. She has that instinct to know. She, know she, she has that instinct when somebody is not right. And that is a gift from God. Can you imagine if, you, if, she, if she gets saved and that instinct gets sanctified? Man, she can see through walls. She can see through you. There's no hiding anything from mom. Amen? One thing that we can learn from Eve is to get that ability. Ask the Lord to enhance that ability. You know, you have that ability to discern because you are in a position to guide, nurture, and protect. You have that grace in you to discern, okay? So when you, when you leave this place, you know, you can practice. You look at your husband and say, you start discerning. No, it, it starts with your relationship with God. The more you walk close with God, the more your intimacy with God becomes real, the more that discernment becomes sharpened, amen? That before things happen, you have that impression. Do not, do not doubt God's word. Okay? If God said it, don't doubt it. Just embrace it. Okay? Stay in community. Remember the story when she, when she was approached by the servant, she was alone. You are vulnerable when you are going through circumstances and you are alone. That's the importance of being in a community. There's nothing wrong with going out with your girlfriends. There's nothing wrong with going out with small groups, with, with discipleship. Because in that place, there's protection. Especially when the, the lion with no teeth goes, goes uh, roaring after you. you. If you stay in community, you will be protected. Amen? So stay in community. Be safe. Be in relationship. Moms, don't be lone rangers. Amen? Yeah. Okay. Next mother. Okay, Hannah. Hannah. Hannah is a, um, the wife of a, pr a priest called Elkanah. He's married to Elkanah, but Elkanah has two wives. Uh, Hannah and uh, Peninas? Pen Penina, not Penitas, Penina. Okay, she was married. So Hannah was, was barren. She wasn't bearing kids. But the other wife was bearing kids, and this wife was mocking ha Hannah. And, and she was just down. So Hannah was desperate. She was feeling the pain. She was feeling the hurt. She was feeling the harassment. She was feeling the oppression. And what she did, instead of to the Lord, she poured out her soul to the Lord. She poured out the anguish. She poured out the heaviness of her soul to the Lord. She prayed until the time that God opened her womb and she bore a son named Samuel. Samuel, you're here. Hi, Samuel. And Denina, not Denina. <laughs> okay. So when, when you're a mom, okay, and you're desiring for things, you're expecting things to happen, no matter how much you try, and you know that they are from God, you're believing God, yet nothing is happening, 
you know, learn from Hannah. In desperation and in anguish of soul, pray to the Lord. There is always a special anointing for the mother, the mother who prays. There is, you know, the praying mother, the power of a prayer, the prayers of a, a mother, a righteous mother, avail it much. Amen. Pray to the Lord and pour out your soul to Him. Instead of, you know, uh, confronting. It's good to confront people. Have you confronted people? You know, people that you don't like probably when somebody, you're a mom, you're on your way to, to, you're in a hurry to do your grocery, you're going to park and then somebody uh, cuts you and gets your parking. You know, you turn green and then you get out of the car. Amen. I never seen Pastor Cheryl do that, you know, in case you, I see that on TV. We, we, you can do things, you can, you can do things in the natural that may be unfruitful, okay? But when you pray and when you pour out the anguish of your soul, the Lord sees through you. He understands you. And the things that are happening in your life right now, the things that you are going through, maybe those, God is using those to lead you to pray and then when you do, He reveals to you a character of Him that you've never seen. Amen. And when you see a character of God through circumstances because you have chosen to, to pray instead of complain, instead of shout, instead of be soaked in anger, and, and in, God opens up your eyes to a new dimension of who He is in your life. And when you uh, get to that place, you're a changed person. Amen. So if you're going through circumstances right now, as if nothing is happening, do what Hannah did. Pour out your soul to the Lord. I don't know what you're going through, but you know what you're going through right now. Okay? And this word may be for you. If you're desperate, pour out your soul to the Lord. the unknown. Amen? He was brave in the face of the unknown and he submitted to the will of God in her life. Amen? Are you facing an unknown right now, mommy, mothers? What kind of unknown are you facing? Probably your, your child's going to college and you don't know where the finances are gonna, sh gonna, gonna, be, gonna come from. It's an unknown, okay? Or it's a situation right now where there's a great need and it's unknown where the provisions are gonna come from. The answer is going to come from, amen? Be brave. Just submit yourself to the will of God, and God will take care of you, amen? And finally, Miss Eunice and Lois, okay? In 2 Timothy chapter 1, 3 to 5, it says, um, this is Paul writing a letter to Timothy. He said, I thank God for my serve with a pure conscience as my forefathers did, as without ceasing I remember you in my prayers night and day, greatly desiring to see you being mindful of your tears that I may be filled with joy when I call to remembrance the genuine faith that is in you which dwelt first in your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice and I am persuaded is in, is in you also. Amen. As mothers, you are in a position to pass on great faith to your children. You can pass on education, you can pass on, you can navigate them to take this course, this career. But I believe that the greatest thing that as a mom you can pass on to your child, to your baby that's in your womb right now, or your child who's 17, 18, 21 years old, is your faith in God. Your faith in God, your love for God. You not only talk about it, but you live it and they see it and that's how they absorb it. When they see you worshiping the Lord, when they see you praying in times of desperation, when they see mom praying instead of complaining, when they see mom, you know, crying out and pouring out her soul to the Lord instead of, you know, um, destroying other people through words, you know, that is a buildup of faith for them. Amen? So in Eunice and Timothy, they, they, Eunice and Louis, they valued their faith. Value your faith. 
passing on your faith not only by teaching it, by, but also by living it. Yeah. Amen? But before you can pass something, you have to have it first. Yeah. Amen? Before you can, you want to see, oh, you know what? A lot of people are saying, I want to see my son. I want to see my kid being one of those kids in the front, worshiping the Lord and just being lost in God's presence. But if they, didn't, don't, they don't see you do that, you cannot pass on something to them that you do not have. You cannot pass on believing for the impossible and the wonderful things and the miraculous things if they haven't heard you pray great things and ask and believe godly big things from God. Amen? So sometimes as parents, not only as mothers but as fathers, we are challenged to, to, to break and pave a way for something for our children, to believe God and trust God for the impossible. And when they see that, they get it. They take it with them when they grow up. And I think that is the best thing that they can take when they grow up. You can plan for their college. You can save for them. You can give them inheritance. But nothing takes the place of them loving the Lord, them believing the Lord, because they have seen mom and dad do it and model it and live it. Amen. Moms, you are in a place right now where you can influence your children. We can influence our children to grow up. You know, I, I saw it on Facebook that the, the future of this nation doesn't depend on one person. It doesn't depend on who gets elected this coming election. It depends on the church waking up. It depends on the, on the mothers and the fathers. You know, the family is the basic unit of the society. And the mother and the father, the mother, because it's Mother's Day, okay, has a particular and great role. In, in strengthening the very foundation, the very core of our society. We nurture our children, the godly principles. We nurture them so that when they go to school and they hear something different, Mom, which bathroom do I go? <laughs> which bathroom do I go? Is it, is it right to do this? Is it right to do that? Is God real? Is God not real? Because he, they have seen us live that, enjoy that, hear, talk about it in our small groups. Yeah. Amen? They're, they're not going to get lost when they go out there. They're not going to be, they will stand up because it's been marked yeah. in here. Amen? So remember, you are, you may not be preaching here at the front, but your life matters to the most people who matters the most in your life, your children, your family. Amen. So, in closing, um, I, I made a survey. Uh, we are here to honor mothers, right? We, it's Mother's Day today, probably. Dads, you have exasperated yourself thinking, what gift can I give my wife or my mom, right? And uh, you probably spent close to $100 or maybe 5 thinking of coming up for the perfect gift, okay? But I saved you the effort of thinking. I did a survey. Some of the people here in the church and some co-workers, yes! So, um, it's good to, to bless our mothers on Mother's Day. We give them colognes, we give them perfumes, we give them jewelries, we feed them for a day. The honoring should be a lifestyle. The honoring should be throughout the year. Amen? The honoring should, be, should not only be one day, but it should be a lifestyle. Because these people, our mothers, we think that uh, they are numb, but they're not. They have feelings. They, if, only, if, if we can ask God for a fresh set of eyes to see what's going on in the life of a mom, in a soul, in a thought, and emotions of a mom, you will be surprised what you will see. They are good in hiding. They are good in hiding. And they want to be strong for you. Okay? I know that song says, what was that song? I don't want to hide from your love, right? But some moms, they hide stuff for the sake of you. Right? They hide their pain. They hide the, the hurts. For the sake of you not being affected by it, okay? But anyway, the survey, okay, the, the two questions, name top three things that you wanna, that will make your life easier as a mother. 
and name the top three things that you can do without, that you want less as a mother, so your life will be easier, okay? So the top three things, these things are your gifts. These three things, they, these are what mothers are crying for, okay? These things here will make e life easier and happier and being a mother a little better for them, for our mothers. These things over here is a trash can. They need to be trashed. They belong in the trash. They, they need less of this in their lives. Are you ready? Okay. The, you take your pen and paper and uh, start making a list or just pay attention. And remember what you are going to hear because this is what you are going to, how you are going to honor your wife, how you're going to honor your mother after today, today and every day and forever. Okay, so let's open. Uh, name the top three things that will make your life easier as a mom. Okay, I'm gonna, this is my, one of my, from, from one of my uh, co-workers. Okay, he said, health health and welfare of my children that all my children will come to know God that my family will stand united okay top three things that will make my life easier as a mom obedience that's not expensive right we can obey the, the kids not the husband <laughs> babysitting services this is true Practical but true. Top three things that will make my life easier is says here, Tita Tess and family. So when you stand with your friend, with your small group, it make life it makes life easier for them. Top three things that will make your life easier as a mom, loving environment, obedient children, respectful family members. Top three things that will make your life easier, not having to work as much, so I, want, I won't miss events with my daughter. She's a single mom. She has to work. But in the middle of working a lot, she misses events with her daughter. I wish I had x-ray vision or special powers to heal, to heal my daughter of, my pain, of pain and worries. A babysitter. Three things that make mothering easy if she had a father figure. It will make easier, it will be a lot easier for me if she would eat everything I cook, <laughs> including the vegetables. So that's a clue. Just just eat it. Okay? Just thank you, Lord, for the food. Is it good? Yes. Well, you made your mom happy. And you, you ate, you ate. If I could, if, if I could have extra time for me to nap, we we can give that to them, right? Husbands, kids, we can make mom and dad, mom nap with dad on Father's Day. Time out with friends. They need to go out too, so let's allow them to do that. Okay. Top three things that will make mothering easy for you. Expression of love for my kids. Like messaging or I miss you notes or text. That's cheap. We can do that. Right? We can send them, hey mom, I miss you. Hey mom, how are you doing? To, val to be valued and appreciated by family. I get energized to be a superhero mom. When they feel the value, when they feel appreciated with words, instead of complaining, oh, why did you cook this food again? We just ate it last month. Amen? When my kids are deeply rooted in the Word of God, the mom rejoices. I think nothing else will make them, the heart of a mom rejoice when she sees the kids and the husband deeply into the things of God. That's cheap. You don't have to spend $100 for that, right? Family time. We can give that. Can we do that? 
Can we give mom more family time? It may just be sitting, watching Netflix with dad there and then on the computer or doing things at the backyard. Oh, kids brushing teeth without being told. Hey, why do we have to be told to brush our teeth? Kids! It's for your own good. So when you grow up, you have like model teeth. Do they have to tell you to brush your teeth? How old are you? If you're three years old, you have to be told to brush your teeth. But if you're 10, 11, 15, 21, stop. Name three things. Family, spouse, and children. I think this talks about uh, the, the atmosphere that the spouse and the children set in the, in the house. Okay? Massage. We can do that? You don't have to pay $40 to get a massage. The husband will massage you, wives. Okay? Rest, that's a nap. That's the second time we hear about napping, okay? Buy the spritz, lotion, and cream. Okay? Again, massage, nap time, and exercise. Well, that one you have to do on your own. We cannot help you with exercise, okay? Moms? Housemaid to do all the chores. Woo! But be careful, you get the older housemaid. Don't get a young housemaid or it, it's not going to be easy for you. Kids cuddling me and taking off white hair. It doesn't say where, but it says white hair. Probably here. So kids, can you cuddle with mom even if you're 16 years old, 17 years old? Can you just cuddle with mom? Don't, don't push mom away when, when, they, when, when she hugs you. Mom will be in ever need of a hug even if you're 21, 41 years old. Okay? Husband being a good provider and spoils me. Okay. Last one for the good things. Family time. Man, family time. That, that's cheap. Mothers are crying for family time, better time management, and motivation to do things. Let's remember that. Okay? Okay. Now, these things that we can do without, let's read them. Uh, raising troubled kids, illness among the family members, being a single parent, um, having not, not having a roof over my head. Top three things that makes mothering harder or difficult for me, disobedience. No babysitting service. Transportation, difficult. Probably the picking up of kids from school and same thing disobedience disrespectful and being careless you know moms they hurt the most when we choose when we become careless with our choices as teenagers we see patients in hospitals you know teenagers making wrong choices being in accident or drug overdose they're lying there on the bed lifeless and mom is right there just feeling most of the pain she's not on the bed but she's feeling the pain because of a careless decision so teenagers be careful with, with the choices that you, that you make. Amen? Don't drink and drive. Drama. We don't need, moms don't need a lot of drama. And, and disobedience and disconnect with God. Moms need less stress and arguments at home. I did it. No, I didn't. She did it. She started it. I want something like this for Father's Day. Okay, housework, homework, and loud noise. Okay, so be sensitive to the needs of your mother. Don't put the TV too loud. Okay, ooh, this one, unfolded laundry. Clutter in the closets and complaints. Okay, I think I know who this came from. Old stuff in the garage. Okay, so husbands, let's take care of the old stuff in the garage. That will make her mother's day. Dog poop in the backyard. Let's scoop it. Weight gain. 
well, we cannot help you with that. You're going to have to do that on your own. Mothers. Okay, here. Material things. I need less of material things so we can put the money on a better cost. Okay? So, husbands, when you buy a boat, when you buy a, a motorcycle, when you buy, you consult the husband, make, the wife, make sure she agrees. Okay? All right. Another thing, clutter, unnecessary stress, and negativism in the household. And the last one, ooh, rolling of eyes. <laughs> Mom, you, they roll back to the, and you all, only see why. So we can do less of the rolling of eyes, right, kids? Yeah? Uh, back talking? Back talking? Like they, they tell you something and then you talk back, you answer instead of listening. Okay? And then the last one is what's the last one? Um, doing things later. When, I, when mom asks you to do something, she needs it done right away. That's the good mother's day gift. Okay, don't say yes, and then after two hours, the dishes are still unwashed. Okay? She tells you to fix your bed, and, uh, and it's already nighttime, and your bed is still not fixed. Amen? So those things, amen? We, we're going to ask all the moms to just stand up right now. Stand where you are, please.